Top quarterbacks in the SEC heading into 2024. We're going to go through quarterback 16 to number one. We're going to do an SEC quarterback ranking list. And I always told myself I would never do a video like this. I would never do like the top quarterbacks in, in whatever conference or uh, quarterback rankings. And and while these rankings aren't mine, so I'm going to use 247. 247 put out an article maybe a week or two ago talking about the top quarterbacks in the SEC, or well, they, they put out their SEC quarterback rankings, so we're going to use their list, and while I'm not a fan of making lists like that, uh, you know, it, it's early in the offseason, and we're trying to put out some SEC quarterback content for us. So we're going to go through this list that 247 put out. I'll put it in the link below if you haven't if you haven't gone through the list yourself. There's an article. It's a good article. It goes through everything. Uh, so again, if you don't agree with the list, don't don't uh, don't come at me. Come at a, a 247, right? Uh, and again, it, it's, it's, it's super early in 2024, so you know, these, these lists could change, and maybe we'll do our own list of something. Maybe we'll talk about what we agree and don't agree with, but we're going to go through every uh, every team's quarterback rankings, again, as it relates to 247, and we'll give our thoughts about it, right? So so we'll give our thoughts on the ranking, and we'll give our thoughts on why they're ranked here, or just our thoughts about the quarterback in, in general. So we'll give their ranking, then we'll give our thoughts. But before we dive into the first quarterback, or through quarterback number 16. If this is your first time tuning into the channel, thanks for tuning in. We're just a big quarterback hub. We talk all things college quarterback. We have a podcast with quarterbacks that come on and are interviewed and, and uh, current former quarterbacks, current former coaches, and we also have this quarterback content in general. So if you like quarterbacks, if you're a big college football fan, consider following along. So number 16, according to 247, Brock Vandergriff, the Kentucky quarterback, former Georgia quarterback, lost the quarterback battle to Carson Beck. Last year, I think we saw that, that Georgia made the right decision in that with Carson Beck having such a good year. But I still think Brock Vandergriff is a really talented quarterback. Yeah, he's got limited experience, but he's always been a guy that I like. He's a high recruit, and he's a pretty good athlete. I don't think people realize how good of an athlete he is. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him featured, not purely as a runner, but see him see the offense at Kentucky feature his running ability. Again, I think Brock Vandergriff could be much higher than number 16 by the end of the season. Uh, obviously, I, I get why he's the, the last one right now, but he's a guy I've always been high on. He can be much higher. All right. Lenore Sellers, South Carolina. And this is a guy, this is number 15. This is a guy who has a ton of potential and who South Carolina fans are really, really high on. If you talk to any South Carolina fan, we got a few guys or a few fans that, that follow the channel that we communicate with. They're super high on him. A lot of Gamecock fans, Gamecock fans are very excited. He didn't have much playing time at all. I think he had three or four passes, maybe two or touchdowns uh but he flashed in that in that in that time so i think we'll be able to see spring as as his ability to, to show a little bit more but they did bring in robbie ashford the former auburn quarterback so if things don't work out if sellers doesn't live up to the hype he's getting now at least from south carolina fans they brought in robbie ashford with a similar skill set really athletic quarterback that can run and, and can uh can be dangerous with his legs number 14 Taylor Green, the second uh, transfer quarterback on the list so far already, right? Boise State quarterback now at Arkansas. And we put a video out about, uh, about Taylor Green and, and our thoughts about him. And, and going into 2023, I guess this past season, I was actually really high on Green. I thought he could be a top five quarterback in the group of five. He had a really good 2022 season, or at least he showed flashes. 2023 comes around and just, just it, it was inconsistent up and down. He had another quarterback start at times before got before that quarterback got hurt. Green got put back in. But I, I come back to this. There's a reason Petrino wanted Green. There's a reason Petrino wanted to bring Green in. And, and I think Petrino knows more about football than I can even imagine, especially quarterback position. And I'll say this with Green. He's flashed. So if you can get Green to play how he has flashed, if you can get him to, to play consistently like that, I think Arkansas can be considered a, a team that hit on their quarterback. Uh, now, you still have to beat out Jacoby Criswell, the, the former North Carolina quarterback that transferred over. There are Arkansas fans that think Criswell may beat Green out. Uh, if you go look at my comments in the last video, they're there. But I think Taylor Green is a, is a talented cat, athletic cat, who I think Petrino can put in position to succeed. Now, Arkansas has a really tough schedule, so we'll see. I think he could. I think Green could play good quarterback, and, and Petrino could call a good a good game, and Arkansas could still not have a great record, right? So big takeaway for Green, the flashes that he's done needs to be 
consistent. All right, number 13 on this list, Auburn quarterback Peyton Thorne. Again, former transfer quarterback from Michigan State. I think there's some positives here. I think it's obvious he needs to improve in the passing game, whether that's just him learning the the offense under, under Hugh Freeze or whether it was on him remains to be seen, but there really wasn't that much of a threat passing. Uh, he had under 2,000 yards in the air. He had like 10 touchdowns in the air and six picks, right? There was really not much of a threat passing. I'm not sure why it was so off, but I think another year, another year of experience in Hugh Freeze's offense can only help. Now, the, 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 the positive takeaway that I got from Thorne was, one, he's a competitor. And two, he showed that he's probably way more athletic than people probably realize until this season. He showed his ability as a runner. So I think you have something there with Thorne, but a step has to be taken, right? I think you could argue some if Thorne has the same season he had last year, some of the guys we already talked about could be ahead of Thorne by the end of 2024. All right, number 12, another transfer quarterback. Wow, we got a lot of transfers. Another transfer quarterback, Diego Pavia. I think I'm pronouncing that right, but he's the, Vander, the Vanderbilt uh, who transferred to Vanderbilt from New Mexico State. Again, he was the, the quarterback that led New Mexico State to beat Auburn this year, and I love watching him play. If you haven't watched our channel before, we do a lot of Group of Five content. I love watching Diego Pablo play for New Mexico State. Exciting quarterback, a lot of mocks. He has that dog in him, right? Uh, you know, kind of undersized, but finds a way to get it done. So I'm excited for it. Is it going to work? We'll see. Vanderbilt always has the toughest schedule because they always play teams that have more talent than them. Uh, but again, he's a, he's a quarterback that I do like. All right, number 11, Blake Shapin, the former Baylor quarterback who transferred to Mississippi State. Wow, that's, that has us at one, two, three, four, five transfer quarterbacks already, even though Thorne transferred two years ago. A lot of transfers. But Blake Shapin, Mississippi State quarterback. Few things here. We put out a video about Shapin too and his transfer to Mississippi State. I'm excited to see how he meshes well or how he meshes with, with Libby's offense. I think I think the best case scenario is that he fits Levy's offense really well. Levy brings up the best in him and they can surprise some people. Because he was up and down at Baylor. He showed some things that that are too like. But if you if you talk to Baylor fans, talk to Baylor people, if you just kind of watch the the Baylor Bears in general the past few years, you'll see that there's a lot of inconsistency. But I think it, for me, it's hard to say, okay, is it all on shape? And, or is it kind of the offense in general that they ran that just didn't develop? Probably a little bit of both. But I think it goes without saying, he needs to push the ball downfield a bit more. You need to spread the ball a bit more, right? But again, I think it's up and down there with, with, with shape. And I'm excited to see if, if Levy can pull out all of what shape has to offer. All right, number 10. Oklahoma quarterback Jackson Arnold, one of the most talented quarterbacks in this whole list. If he hits and he peaks this year, he could be one of the top quarterbacks in this list. I'm really high on Jackson Arnold. I think there's a lot to like about him. And it, it's going to be interesting to see how he meshes with Latrell. I think Latrell does a lot of things that that Arnold can fit. And I think Arnold can make Latrell's offense even expand even more, right? A super strong arm, can throw from any platform. Athletic quarterback can be, can be a threat as a runner. Now, there is a tough schedule. Oklahoma's got one of the toughest schedules in the SEC, probably in all of college football. I don't have it off the top of my head, but they got one of the tougher schedules. So I think it all comes down to how does Jackson Arnold mesh with Seth Luttrell in, in the offense? I think they're going to mesh pretty well. Right? I think they could mesh really well and still, I don't know, have seven or eight wins, right? It's just a really tough schedule. But we put out a film breakdown of Jackson Arnold if you want to go back and, and, and watch it and kind of just went through our, kind of our, our three main or the, the, the three qualities that stand out the most from Jackson Arnold. But I think you can run, run the RPO system. I think you can use his legs. I think you can push the ball downfield. So I think if everything hits, I think Arnold could have a really good season. All right, number nine, a video we just put out. Texas A&M quarterback Connor Wegman. He, he, he's, he's a cat that if you talk to, depending who you talk to, they'll, they'll give you different answers. But guys who know a lot more about football than I do are really high in Connor Wegman. So I've always been high in Connor Wegman. And I'm excited to see what happens with Colin Klein's offense. I, I, I think if, if these guys are correct that are really high on him, AM could surprise some people. AM has a favorable schedule compared to other SEC teams. I know they open up with Notre Dame, right? But besides that, they got Texas, Mizzou, and LSU. Besides that, I don't think any other teams is, is ranked heading into 2024 right now. So as it compares to other SEC schedules, I think AM has a friendly schedule, right? Now, Connor Wegman, he's got to stay healthy. He's only, he played in, what, three and a half-ish games last year. The year before that, uh, he, what, had four games? Something like that that, that, that that he got into towards the end of the season. 
and I think he showed them the ability to improve. His yards per attempt went from 6.8 to 8.2 from 2022 to 2023. Now, the schedule wasn't a ton of heavy hitters. They did play Miami last year that he played against. So he, he stacked up some stats against some, some not great teams, ULM and, and New Mexico, I believe. But still, he showed improvement. I, I'm excited to see him combine with Colin Klein's offense. I think I think he could maximize Klein's offense. I think Klein could put Wigman in a position to, to do really well. So again, the jury's still out, but I'm pretty excited to see Wigman play in 2024. At number eight, heading into 2024, Graham Mertz, Florida quarterback, Former Wisconsin quarterback. Dude, I need to go through and see how many of these quarterbacks transferred. I'll do that at the end of the video. Uh, but Graham Mertz, Florida quarterback, probably made the biggest improvement, or at least one of the biggest improvements, him and Brady Cook probably. But Graham Mertz really revitalized his career, had a career year at Florida. He went from, from always being talked about throwing interceptions to having a TD to interception ratio of almost 7-1. to one. It was better than 6-1. to one. 20 touchdowns last year, 3 picks. His completion percentage was 73% and just over 2,900 yards in the air. So so you always talk about accuracy with Graham Mertz, right? You always talk about accuracy, accuracy, accuracy. Then everyone will talk about, yeah, but it's a bunch of dinking and dunking. And, and I get it. Sometimes that offense is like that with Napier's offense, but his yards per attempt were actually at eight. That's not, you know, anything crazy, but it's probably above average. It, it, it's much higher than what it was at Wisconsin. I think Wisconsin, he was in the sixes. At Florida this year, he was at eight. So so he did a good job taking what the, the defense gave him. He took care of the ball, and he pushed the ball downfield probably more than given credit for, at least in those middle-range type throws, right? He maybe didn't have a ton of 20-yard completions or where the ball was thrown 20 yards or more, but he had a lot of good mid-range throws. I thought it was really good, just improvement overall, a career year. If you want to watch some some, some Graham Mertz tape, go watch the South Carolina game. That's my favorite game of Mertz, probably his whole career. Leading the team back in the fourth quarters, our fourth quarter or fourth, uh, fourth down conversion. Again, really looking forward to, to Graham Mertz in 2024, but I think he had the best improvement of any quarterback on this list, although you can argue Brady Cook, and, and I'm looking forward to see what happens another year in the system of Napier, and I think, you know, if you talked about Mertz last year, he was talking about, hey, he might be the worst quarterback in the SEC. Well, now he's a top-half quarterback heading into 2024, right? All right, so let's move on. Garrett Nussmeyer, number seven LSU quarterback, a guy I was really, really high on, and again, guys that are smarter than me when it comes to college football and quarterbacks and recruiting are high on him as well. I, I thought that LSU had the, the, the best quarterback room last year. Obviously, Jay and Daniels made that look made us look right, but I was thinking more because of Garrett Nussmeyer, because of the backup situation, because because there's there's obviously a drop off in Dan, Dan. I think Daniels did unbelievable last year. Of course, he won the Heisman, but but I think Nussmeyer. It is a top half quarterback, and he can even be, if he hits his full potential, he can be a top five quarterback in the SEC this year. I really do. Right? So he's been the backup several years. He's been developed, uh, and he's ha he's played some meaningful snaps. The bowl game this year, the bowl game the previous year against Purdue, where they, 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 they boat raced him. And then the SEC championship game in 2022. He's got a big arm, wants to push it downfield. Very gunslinger-ish, right? Um, but I think, I think you have a chance with Nussmeyer to, to be really good offensively at LSU. Again, we'll wait to see, but I think I think this is probably a pretty good ranking for him. Uh, he's in striking range. All right, number six. I'm so bad at pronouncing this name. You already know what I'm about to say. Nico Ia Maleva. Maleva? I'm still so bad. I'm just going to call him Nico, right? Uh, yeah, so bad. I apologize for, for butchering that. Don't get too mad at me, Tennessee fans. So, didn't play much this year by mop-up duty, but played against Iowa in the bowl game. And I think he showed enough to have fans excited, one. But then also, if you just kind of go back to his recruiting history uh, and, and, and the type of recruit that he was, I think if he hits, he's definitely going to be a top a top quarterback in this league, especially with Hypo's offense, right? Uh, you, you saw him use his legs against Iowa, several TDs in that bowl game against Iowa. But if you just go back and watch his high school clips and watch the, the, the mop-up duty, it, it's, it's easy to see why everyone's so excited about Nico here. All right, Brady Cook, number five, Mizzou quarterback. One of the biggest jumps from 2022 to 2023. And I had Brad Smith on, the former Mizzou great, who, who's a close friend of mine here in the area. And we talked about Brady Cook going into going into the 2023 season. He kind of called it. He, he talked about, hey, hey, Cook's done some good things. You know, he just needs more experience. This was his first year starting in 2022. And lo and behold, Brad Smith was right. right, right? That's why you always trust the guys that have done it and played for a while. 
Brad Smith was right. Brady Cook had a huge year in 2023, one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC. He's number five according to this list. And, you know, he could even be higher uh, by the end of the season in 2024. Or I'm sure some people have him higher in their list, right? Again, the 247 list that we're going off of. But his completion percentage was 66%. Over 3,300 yards passing, over 300 yards rushing, 21 touchdowns in the air, only six picks, and eight touchdowns on the ground. So he had 29 total touchdowns, only six interceptions. Again, one of the biggest jumps, and he was a huge reason why Mizzou was so good this year. Yeah, he had great receivers to throw to, some standout guys, but I thought he did a hell of a job. The biggest thing that stood out to me was his ability to get the ball out quick. 52% of his completions or of his dropbacks, the ball was out in less than two and a half seconds. That was second in the SEC, only behind Carson Beck. So the ball was out in two and a half seconds. He had great receivers to throw to. It was one of my favorite quarterbacks to watch this whole season in 2023. And so there's a ton of excitement to look forward to for, for Cook in 2024. And, and, if, and if last year was an example of what can be done and, and the ability to improve, then I think it's fair to expect even more improvement in 2024 uh, as the season comes up. Again, we're, this list is way too early, and we're just doing this video because we need some content to put out there besides film breakdowns, right? All right, so let's move on. All right, we got number four, Jalen Milrow, Alabama quarterback. You could say this was maybe the biggest surprise of the 2023 season, especially with how it began with him getting benched, right? But I think he showed the ability to get better throughout the year, kind of like what we talked about with Cook from 2022 to 2023. We saw Milrow develop throughout the whole season in 2023. He had over 2,800 yards passing, 23 passing touchdowns, six picks, 531 yards on the ground, and 12 touchdowns on the ground, 35 total touchdowns. And we, we talked about, we put out a video of Jalen Milrow and how he could fit in with, with DeVore, the new head coach. I think there's a lot of exciting things that DeVore brings that DeVore has de developed that Milrow fits, right? Milrow fits the ability to push the ball downfield. Penix led the whole country and completions where the ball was thrown 20 yards or more downfield. Jalen Miller's biggest strength is the deep ball. Jalen Miller's best attribute from 2023 is pushing the ball downfield, making really tough throws, right? So Miller can already make these really tough throws. Now it's just getting more consistent with the underneath stuff, taking what the defense gives you. And, and I don't think there's any reason why he can't continue to progress. I don't think, think there's any reason why he can't get better at the underneath type stuff with DeBoer coming in, with this being his second year in the offense. Remember, it's only his second year starting. I think we got to give guys more and more kind of a, a runway to continue to improve, right? So Miller coming off, coming off of a fantastic season. We got Coach DeBoer coming with his offense bringing in. And I think we can see more consistency and next steps for Jalen Miller. But he already does the stuff that makes DeBoer's quarterbacks really good. And so I think the easy stuff, he nails that. He, he, he may be the best quarterback in the SEC, right? Or at least he'll be a top quarterback again. I'm really high in Carson Beck, which we're going to get to in a second, but I think he could be one of the top quarterbacks again. All right, Jackson Dart, Ole Miss. Man, you, man there's a few guys you could say had big jumps, right? He, he, he had just as big as jumps as Brady Cook and, um, and, and, and Graham Mertz. Like, he really did. I thought he had a hell of a season. He's number three on this list, and I think that's a pretty – Pretty accurate place to put him. I think you could argue, we'll go over a few arguments at the end, but Jackson Dart, the improvement he made from 2022 to 2023 was big, right? Remember, in 2023, the offseason, they, they brought in a few cats to compete against him, right? They wanted, I don't want to say that they wanted, but they needed some competition at that spot. And I think that helped get the best out of Jackson Dart. Another year in Kiffin's system, right? Again, just like we talked about, this was a second year starting, more experience, more kind of a runway you give guys to develop, the better they can potentially be. Dart had 23 touchdowns in the air, five interceptions, right under, right over 3,300 yards passing, right? He took shots, he took what the defense gave him, had that huge game against LSU that we put him on the scene. And if, if Ole Miss lives up to all the hype they're getting right now and all of the hype around them, it's going to largely be because of Jackson Dart. Jackson Dart, great season last year, took care of the ball, Again, a third season in Kiffin's offense as a starting quarterback, another transfer guy, which we'll hit on in a second. But I think I think for Ole Miss to live up to the hype, Dart's gonna have to have another season like he did. I'm gonna take a quick break, get a get a swig of water, and then then we'll finish these last two quarterbacks and kind of give our overall thoughts in general. All right, sorry about that. All right, Quinn Ewers, number two, Texas quarterback, another transfer, crazy. And we just put out a few videos on Quinn Yours. 
you can go back and check out. We did one film breakdown talking about some of his biggest improvements, which were one, pushing the ball downfield. That's still an area that he needs to improve on and take some more shots. But they had so many good weapons to throw to that you didn't necessarily need to. Some of Stark's offense was getting the ball out quick, right? But push the ball downfield, he did improve on that. He did. His yards per attempt went from 7.4 to like 8.8, oh, I believe. And then you also saw him be way more accurate, right? He, he, he was way more accurate as a passer. He, his completion percentage was 58 and 22 in 2022, and then it became 69. It went up to 69% in 2020. 23. And then you saw him as a runner. Now, he's not going to be someone that's going to burn the, the, the cornerback to the edge. But he had five touchdowns on the ground. So I think the fact that he improved this year is another example of, like, the more time you have an offense, the better you're, going to be, the better you're going to 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 be. He also took care of the ball really well, too. His, his touchdown interception ratio was almost four to one. So a lot of things like about, about Quinn Year's last year, over 3,400 yards passing. His completion percentage we talked about went up 11%. His yards per attempt did go up uh, 1.4, which is a pretty big deal. And he had 27 total touchdowns. He, he could be, if he takes that next step, one of the tough quarterbacks drafted this year or in the next next draft class. All right, let's move on. I'm not good at talking this long. It's one of our longer videos, about 20-something minutes. All right. uh, let, let's go ahead and, and wrap this thing up with Carson Beck at number one. Georgia quarterback, 24 touchdowns, six picks, 3,900 yards, right under, the, right over 3,900 yards passing. And he saved a lot of his games, or a lot of his performances were in prime time, were against some of the better teams. Even though they blew out some of these teams, like, like, like Ole Miss, he still had some of his best games were against these teams. Another year in this offense, another year with Kirby and being the guy, and, and he could be one of the top quarterbacks, if not the top quarterback taken in the draft next year I, I think he has every tool you want right and you saw the ability as a passer last year the ball was out quick we mentioned Brady Cook getting the ball out in less than 2.5 seconds 52 percent of his dropbacks Carson Beck was number one that SEC 56 percent of his dropbacks the ball was out so if you pair him getting the ball out quick with the great offensive line and all the receivers he has around him that usually that usually equals a really good quarterback. He's got the best blockers, the best people to throw to, and a quarterback like like, like Beck usually equals success. And that's exactly what, what Beck did last year. So I, I anticipate him continuing to build on and at the worst being a top three quarterback in the SEC. It's just hard not to when you have the tools that Beck has. You can read the defense like Beck does. Again, the ball was coming out. That means he was reading the defense really well. The ball was coming out. But he also has a great offensive line to protect him if he does have to hold on to the ball. So again, this is not my list. This was the, the list on 247 the, for the, uh, the, top, the quarterback rankings in the SEC. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What's wrong? What's right? Where do you switch people? Let's go back and see how many guys have transferred. Right? So you have 16 quarterbacks on this list. We have one transfer, two transfers. So Quinn Ewers transfer. Jackson Dart transfer. That's two. We have Graham Mertz, three. Then we have Shapen, four. Pavia, five. Thorn, six. Green, seven. Vandergriff, eight. So eight guys have transferred on this list. This is kind of interesting. I think it's a good list. I mean, it's hard to make these rankings. Uh, if I had to pick some, I'd probably put I'd probably put Milro ahead of Dart. Uh, I like having Quinn at two, Beck at one. Dart's probably four in my book. Milro's probably at three. Cooks five at four. That's, I think I think you can make an argument about Graham Mertz being ahead of seven, uh, being ahead of Nussmeyer and Nico just because he's played. But again, it depends how you do these rankings, right? Are you going to go off what they did or projections? So I think they probably have in the article what they did. It's probably a little bit of both looks like. But I'll link the article below so you can kind of look and go through their thought process and, and why they had these these rankings. Again, if you like this video or if you like any SEC or, or just quarterback content, consider liking, sharing, subscribing. It really does help the channel. Let us know what kind of comp content you want to see below. And again, let us know your thoughts in the comments. What do you think about this list, about these rankings? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.